Good afternoon. Welcome to the Main Street Historic Commission. Um, looks like spring has finally arrived in the borough, and uh, happy St. Patty's Day um, to all you folks out there. Brenda, would you like to call to order the roll call? I'll be glad to. Linda Anderson. Gib Beckling. Here. David Becker. Here. Deborah Belcher. Here. Rick Cantrell. <laughs> Jim Thompson. Here. Mayor Mike White. Here. Howard Wilson. <clears throat> Okay, um, we, we have a quorum, but I don't think we have to vote on anything today. And uh, unfortunately, if we do, I have to abstain from voting since I'm involved with the church. Um, but um, we can uh, ask to approve the minutes since we do have a quorum. So any additions or deletions or changes to the minutes to the last meeting? I'll ask for a motion to approve then. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, motion uh, approved. And uh, the new business, Robert? Uh, yes, Chairman Becker. Uh, what we have this month is uh, a request from uh, the address is 404 East Main Street. It's the Central Christian Church. Uh, and they're requesting some guidance on some problems they're having with their. Uh, with their roof uh, and how it's causing some damage inside the church. Uh, evidently, the, the parapets uh, and the roof where they meet, they're causing some drainage problems. The water's coming inside, and they uh, they want to know uh, what, if anything, can be done uh, to the to the parapets, or you know, just basically what what can be done without uh, too much uh, cost incurring. Uh, uh, into the project. Uh, the uh, agenda materials that I sent out, they show the pictures of the church itself. Uh, and I believe that Mr. Hill from the church has a PowerPoint presentation that will uh, will even uh, uh, verify more what he's talking about. And I can turn it over to him for his PowerPoint presentation and he can uh, explain a little bit better than I can of what, uh, what they're going through. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much, and uh, <clears throat> I thank the Commission for the opportunity to be here today to get some preliminary guidance on perhaps what we can do about the situation that we're facing. Uh, with me today are Janet Mills. She's our past moderator uh, or chairperson of the board of the church. Uh, Dr. Steve Odom, who is our senior pastor, um, and Barrister Haynes, who I think many of you know, uh, who is our current moderator or chairman of the board. In addition, uh, David Wilson is here, who is a member of our property committee, and uh, Dennis Becker, who is a member of our property committee, and I'm the chair of that property committee. Um, okay, if, thank you. Uh, what you see here in the first slide is just um, an introduction of the positions of the people who are most intimately involved in this particular project. Uh, if I can advance it. There we go. Okay, this particular structure was built in uh, 1913. Uh, it is in the East Main Historic District, and this particular structure has served us very well. Uh, we had our 100th anniversary last year, and at that anniversary, we did extensive work on the exterior of the church, including the dome, uh, to preserve it and coat it and make sure that it was uh, functional. Uh, we felt like at that point that we were past some of the major problems that we were facing in trying to maintain this grand old lady. Uh, but as we took a look closer at it this year, it became readily apparent that we are not past that point. Um, this is some of the handout material that I provided to you. Uh, we are really looking for guidance at this point. We have not entertained uh, uh, an engineering opinion at this point. 
because we would like to know from the commission what you deem as permissible under your guidelines before we go ahead and invest in uh, that uh, engineering workup. Uh, here are some photos and drawings. There are some here that are added after the uh, handout materials were provided to you. And the first thing has to do with the condition of the uh, underlayment of the roof. And uh, this is tongue and groove uh, uh, six inch boards. You can see that uh, it's cracked in many places, uh, needs to be replaced. So clearly we have a roofing issue that <coughs> is in some sense separate from uh, the issue that we're here to talk about today. So it's uh, something that we're going to have to incur. Uh, it gets a little bit worse in places we have no uh, underlayment at all. It's just completely cracked away and in some places it's uh, pretty much a disaster. So that is um, a major expense that we will incur. And we've begun collecting uh, the estimates to get that work done. Now, if you look at the drainage system that we have now, um, what you'll see, it's the internal drainage system that was common uh, in the 18th and 19th century, uh, where the water drains off the roof uh, into an internal pan, and then from that down a drainage pipe out below the parapet wall, and then exiting down uh, the, the down uh, spouts outside. We have had significant leakage uh, coming from those areas that has uh, produced damage on the internal walls uh, of the church. Uh, we've also had some ceiling damage. Uh, and about three or four years ago, after Christmas Eve services, we lost about a uh, six by eight foot section of the plaster ceiling that came crashing down into the sanctuary. So we're very concerned about whatever we do, we want to make sure it's done right uh, and that uh, we can safely use that sanctuary. Uh, this is a view of the parapet wall uh, from the outside. You can see that uh, the flashing that has been applied uh, has not been uh, done well. Uh, also, it needs to be tuck pointed all the way around if we maintain those walls. This is uh, just another close up view of the condition of those walls. This is a view of the top of one of the parapet walls and one of the inner drain pans. And you can see that the shallow nature of this pan as uh, opposed to the runoff from uh, the roof shingles uh, makes it possible, according to uh, one of the people we've had up there, one of the contractors, that this may well fill up, splash back, and overflow back under the shingles and then drain down uh, <coughs> against the walls inside, producing the damage. Uh, this is another uh, uh, view of one of the pans. You can see that it appears that it's been coated with fiberglass at some point. We do not know what the original material was. Apparently, um, back in the 18th century, copper was common, uh, and uh, it may be that we have uh, sheet metal up there because this is a later structure, but we don't know. If we look at the drains coming out of uh, the particular inner pans, uh, this is one particular one where you can see clearly that it's been coated with, uh, it looks probably like tar, it's cracked, uh, and uh, is probably responsible for leakage. And here is another one, uh, the similar kind of condition. So. That brings us to the issue of how can we handle that leakage. One recommendation was that if we could dispense with the parapet walls and extend the roof down so that it runs oops, excuse me, so that it runs down just to an outer gutter and downspout, uh, that that would solve the problem. Okay. The parapet walls are not structurally supporting anything. Okay, they just sit on top of uh, the church wall. And so bringing the roof out, extending it down, we could bypass that whole issue. And that would be one solution. And so it might look something like this. <clears throat> this is an, uh, a picture, it's actually a Photoshop that uh, um, David Wilson did where he just took out the parapet wall in the back 
uh, by photoshopping to give us an idea of what it might look like without that parapet wall. Now that is not the only particular solution to this problem. Um, there are other ways it could be handled. One suggestion was to go through the parapet walls and install external drain ports uh, that would drain out past the parapet walls at the bottom of the walls and that would prevent any buildup of the water. Uh, so that is another possible solution. So at this point, um, I would be willing to handle any questions that you have that I haven't clarified. I'd like to be able to have the other members of the church who are here uh, to be able to respond to those as well uh, and um, then get your opinions on where you think we might go with this. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mills, and, and I have to say we as a board here really appreciate the extensive um, photos uh, and looking at all these different options and, and so we can get a really good feel what the problem is up there. Uh, if any of the other church members want to speak at any time, if they could come to the podium where the mic is, uh, we would appreciate it. Um, on our board today, um, we have Jim Thompson, who is an architect uh, here in the Middle Tennessee and has done some extensive work with parapets. So I'm going to first hand it over to him and for some ideas from, from his point of view and uh, the rest of the board. Well, thanks, Chairman. Uh, first off, the lining of the pan there, what is that material behind the parapet? Uh, it appears in that one picture that it has at one point been fiberglassed. Okay. Um, at least that's what it appears to me. Um, if we can go back <coughs> to that picture, yeah. that's what it looks like to me. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting picture in that there have been obviously lots of repairs over the years and everybody's repairing on everyone's previous mistakes and problems. And to me, I'm doing a similar project right now with the Omaha Underwater Treatment Plant in Nashville, and they have similar leaks. It happens to be a built-up roof, not a shingled roof like yours, and a very flat slope, a quarter inch per foot, very, very slight. slight. But uh, it seems to me that you need, uh, you, there's a couple things that you could do to improve upon it. I would suggest that first off you strip all of that uh, protective layers, all those pan fiberglass and everything else and get back down to the original material. Uh, at that point then you can find your leaks and repairs and physical repairs that you need to do. Uh, typically what we do in a built-in gutter, which are they're beautiful designs but they are a leak waiting to happen, yes. is that you consider perhaps then making sure it's structurally sound uh, and then you can do a couple of things. You can either reline that with something like a back with metal but the <coughs> joints then may again separate. That's what's going to typically happen or to rust out because you don't have enough fall mm -hmm. uh, to get the water out there quickly. And the whole game is to get the water out quickly. Uh, in this particular case you only have one downspout per corner of the building and I would say that you might could consider having a secondary downspout on each side against like near the front pilasters you could put it in the corner where the pilaster turns the corner and goes back into the body of the building you could hide one there and change your pitch of the trough that's up there you could also uh, create a cricket behind the parapet which is a very flat gable roof where its hip would be no higher than your uh, parapet and it would shed water to these downspouts. If you had just the one, it would shed it to that one downspout. If you added a second one, it would shed it to both of them. And then you could replace the drain from that connection out through the wall into <coughs> the gutter and then down the downspout, uh, mm -hmm. down to the ground. So you could do the cricket, you could put in rubber, the EPDM, up behind and to the top of the stone cap, which looks like it's got all kinds of goop up there at this point. Um, and you could do it to the top of that, and then you could take it up. But when you take it up the shingle roof, when you replace that, I would make sure the rubber goes higher than the top of the parapet because that's creating a, um, a ditch, if you will, up there. You want the water mm -hmm. to overflow your parapet than to go over your flashing 
your rubber and back into the building. What we typically do, though, is we take the parapet off and take the rubber up to a point and transition with flashing and counterflashing and put flashing under that coping stone and set it back down so that you can easily repair it in the future. But I think you need to get all of that out of there. Now, codes today typically, do, at least in, Mer in Nashville, they do not allow you to have a parapet without an overflow scupper. And a scupper is the hole that you were talking about. Right. And so, for instance, when you have these built-in gutters or parapets, typically what happens is the roof drains get clogged up. And if you don't have some kind of like squirrel cage over it to keep the leaves away from it, but then the leaves really still are going to pile up against it. So you've got to constant, constantly be vigilant about keeping the debris out so the drain can do its job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if you were to you know, either add the cricket, line it with rubber, and add scuppers, and maybe you added a scupper in each architectural panel. If you could go back perhaps to the photograph at the side, um, you could potentially add a, a scupper in the panel between the pilasters. It reflects also in the parapet above. You could put an overflow scupper that if those downspouts get clogged up or frozen, Mm -hmm. In the wintertime, the water could still come out and go over. So those would be right at the base of, of the parapet wall? They would be where the pan, it's usually up a bit because you want your drains to work first, but if your drains then clog up, it's a little bit higher typically, the, the scupper, so that it can come through and out. And it's lying so the water doesn't get into the brick and go then down your wall and inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it sounds to me like... <clears throat> One of the things you said, removing the parapet wall and then putting the metal. I wasn't suggesting removing the parapet wall, but removing all of the stuff that's been gooped in okay. the trough. All right. And it looked to me, I really couldn't tell from the photograph, that the parapet stone is either very deteriorated or that's just more of the repairs over the years, and it might be part of the fiberglass that's there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if that's the case and the stone is actually good, you could lift it up, run your rubber up the back face and terminate it into flashing, counter flashing that runs under a sheet of copper, under that, between the, the brick parapet and the stone coping, so that you've got the, the um, copper preventing water coming through the top at the joints where the stone meets, and you mm -hmm. need to seal those well too. But it makes for an easy transition that water goes in up and over and out. Okay. Should it ever become a real problem. But parapets are, are, are beautiful architectural things, but they do create indeed lots of problems as do built in otherwise called Queen Anne gutters. Mm -hmm. and, the, and they need to be maintained on a more frequent basis than any other kind of roofing design system that we know of. Uh, really. I mean, I, when I drove by today just to look again at other churches nearby, the Baptist Church has a similar type of no parapet design that you're talking about, but it does indeed have a built in gutter on that slope that's catching it. The problem they have, apparently, is they have built in downspouts inside the wall or the building and not external. My fear for them mm -hmm. is should it ever freeze, it's going to bust the seams and drench the wall, sure. whereas your downspouts are on the outside. <coughs> so it's the trough you have is the problem, and the connection from the trough, the drain to that downspout, that's your weak link. Okay. Now, when we talk about, um, we talked about relining, mm -hmm. uh, but when we're talking about uh, the particular entry points or exit points, <clears throat> from that uh, from that internal pan, what do we do? What would you recommend that we do about that internal piping or whatever is in there? Mm -hmm. um, My guess is that over the years, you probably it's not been maintained, and it may indeed already be cracked or rusted through, and you probably need to go in there and replace it. It looks like you're about to approach doing some pretty major re-roofing anyway, and so right. you might as well. You've only got four locations now for drains and so I would suggest that you go in there and investigate what's wrong with it and most likely replace it. Mm -hmm. And um, an appropriate material for that? Well, I mean you could put back metal but you know it's going to come again in, in so many years but if the building was built in 1913 you've almost had a hundred good years of use for it but you might do PVC piping that then you would connect to a metal downspout on the outside okay. so that it looks like you did traditionally. I noticed that you have these rectangular 
metal downspout. Historically, it would have been a round downspout. That would be nice to see back if you chose to replace them. Okay. But you do have the rectangular ones, and we, we could, you know, you could put those back as well. Okay. But you might change from where the, the drain in the pan goes down to that hidden condition, change that to PVC piping so that it's going to last longer and not have a reason to uh, seam split. And an aluminum would be still appropriate for that, even if it was round. Uh, I think the aluminum uh, would do well. It wouldn't. It would not rust. Uh, it's a, a, it's again about maintenance and not freezing at that connection and causing it to split. Mm -hmm. And so getting water off quickly, and so that it can't get stuck in there with leaves clogging it and this kind of thing. Aluminum could eventually split too if it's not maintained. Right. Okay. But I think, I think either uh, certainly reworking your pan and whether you keep one downspout and one drain per section or you add a second one to help get water off quickly. And then I would feel comfortable if we could work with you on locating a scupper to just protect your investment, your, your building. You might be able to put a small, modest one on the parapet as an overflow so that you don't have the extra burden should it get clogged up. Mm -hmm. Once you see it overflowing, then you know you've got a problem. You've got to go up there and clean out the drain. Right. Okay. All right. So back to, back to one of the original questions that we're dealing with today, and that is regarding removal of the parapet walls. Is it, is it the opinion of the commission that that is something that would not be acceptable for us to do? I only speak for one person. Sure, sure, go ahead. Sam. I don't want to mess your computer up here. Uh, my name is Steve Odom. I am the pastor of the church. Uh, Hank did a good job at explaining how we got to this point and where we are and what we need to do. And why we've come here is to. Partly to explain that, you know, the mission of our church, and usually the mission of any church, is not to necessarily maintain an historically accurate building. You know, the mission of the church is a religious mission rather than the interest and obviously mission that you have as an historic commission. Most of you are volunteers. All of our people are volunteers, except for myself, that work on maintenance and property and things like that. Some of you are probably on those kind of committees at your own church. With regard to laying down rubber or uh, that kind of material and keeping the parapets, one of the difficulties with that is that the rubber does itself degrade mm -hmm. and requires a, a little more of an active maintenance. None of us has ever been up on that roof. It's the kind of roof you don't want to get on unless you're a professional roof man. Uh, and, and so it's, it's really quite difficult for a volunteer organization to do the kind of regular, active, uh, somewhat intensive maintenance on that kind of roof, which is part of the reason why we've come asking for the ability to remove the parapet so that it's a more of a, you know, a, a, you might call it a traditional roof, it's not a Queen Anne roof, but a normal looking roof that would still fit in with the character of the building and the character of the neighborhood somewhat and would not be, it would not be an obtrusive building, it would not be adding something uh, unusual and modern and contemporary, but it would just be making it easier for Central Christian Church to, with the funds that we have, which are not limitless, to maintain this historic building in the historic district. <clears throat> As we've been looking through this, it, it appears to us that several of the historic churches in Murfreesboro are not in the historic district, and, and, and given us a little heartburn over why we're in the historic district and we have to you know get permission to make exterior changes and things like that so we're, we're we've been a little puzzled about that I know that's not the issue today but uh, we hope that 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 we can work with the Commission so that we can uh, get a way to do this in a way that's financially feasible for a church that you know like many churches of our size is just not made of money so, but thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions for me particularly? All right. Well, Steve, I, I would just say that today we would not be able to vote on it since I have to abstain from voting and we need five members. I see. So we would have to do that at a, a future time. But I would encourage the board's opinion 
uh, on the removal of the parapet itself, and at least you'll know individually where. Yeah, that'd be helpful this to hear from other, point. other members of your commission. Yeah, well, I'll start off myself with just an opinion, and you know, we've had some discussions before. I think the parapets are a major architectural piece of the building, and I personally would hate to see them go, but I certainly understand the financial issues that you're faced with in the upcoming um, uh, maintenance of, of <coughs> such a situation. Um, I would like to hopefully be able to find through interaction with the board and other uh, factors that you might on the outside come up with a um, a solution that would minimize the maintenance in the future and and yet uh, and still be uh, a less cost uh, proposition than removing the parapets itself so uh, that's my opinion at this particular point uh, but uh, Jim, what's your thoughts? Well, um, certainly you could uh, use copper to reline it, and you could weld those seams and uh, solder those seams, and it would it would last you a long time. But anything, as you know, uh, has to be maintained, and nothing is maintenance free. It just isn't. And so uh, I would I would be surprised, frankly, if the repairs that I'm suggesting would be more expensive than actually taking it down and rebuilding the top that you suggest. So I would I would welcome uh, getting a proposal or seeing a proposal from your contractor for both approaches. Uh, I do think it's a significant feature, and I, th I would really like to see it remain. I uh, I, I agree with. Uh, Jim, I think I think the the parapet is an important feature. I think one of the big problems is has been the improper maintenance. You know, one of the, in in historic preservation, the two enemies of buildings that people commonly cite are asphalt and Portland cement. So anytime someone goes in and patches something with asphalt, they've actually harmed it. And so if you were to go back to the original design, and then it will probably take a little more maintenance. Somebody's got to get up on top of the roof. It wouldn't be me because I'm scared of heights. But uh, uh, it isn't a bad pitch, you know, on that, that roof. But if it were properly maintained, I think, uh, uh, the, do you suppose it was copper originally? It could be copper. It could have been uh, galvanized metal of sorts, a turn-coated steel sheet. Built in 1912, so, uh, you know, a, a properly constructed and maintained a feature like that might actually cost you a lot less in the long run than this than this repair would be. That, that's my impression. Well, I guess I'm next then. I too would hate to see the parapet go because I think it's a very important part of the architecture. Um, I do think that there are ways, as Jim suggested, that would be very feasible and could work out. I do think that either way you go, though, you're going to have to add some additional exterior downspouts, like Jim suggested, just to get more of that water off the roof anyway. So I can see both reasons for it, but if we could figure out a way that was financially acceptable for you all and still keep the parapets, I think that would be a good thing. I have no expertise whatsoever in this in this area, and I've, I've already learned a lot. So I would I would think it would be um, nice just to go, like Jim said, both ways and see what's what's feasible and make what makes sense to you, and then to the uh, committee. Do you want to speak? Uh, I'm Tom Haynes, Mr. Chairman, and fellow members of the commission, I address this to to Jim. If could you perhaps or would you have any drawings of this general design that you could uh, point us to or where we could find those to show uh, another architect or an engineer to look at to give us a more detailed estimate than perhaps we would be able to get without that. Uh, as every building is unique and different, there are no sort of standard things, but I'd be happy to uh, work with a designer, architect that you may employ, or contractor, 
and, and, and send sketches back and forth and suggest approaches on that, be happy to. Okay. Thank you very be much. Be happy to. Uh, Jim, would you uh, talk to the very top of the parapet on how to, because I personally think that that's also where some seepage is coming into the roof because it's <clears throat> some sort of tar that's on top of it now that's yeah. all cracked. Uh, the project that I mentioned to you earlier, they had done the same thing. They carried fiberglass up on the top of it and, in fact, went on top of the coping stone. And so water is getting in because it has delaminated from that stone. Water is getting in underneath it from blowing rains and actually going in and coming going right under the, in this case, the pan that you might have. Right. Uh, and those joints, and one of the... Uh, Give you mentioned there's two things, you know, tar and everything. The other thing is height. People don't get up to where they can't get to or they're afraid to get up there. I have a height issue too. Uh, but I would imagine that your coping st stone, the joints are probably no longer uh, uh, sealed at the joints and they probably have open, open joints there. But it's always good to put a flashing piece there, and we always use copper and have it project out beyond the face of the brick below a little bit and point down as a trip edge mm -hmm. so that water, should it get somehow through the coping stone, it gets to that copper flashing and it pitches it to the outside. Uh, then on the inside it goes um, through the wall and over and then you flash and counter flash there and you allow a way for the material to come up in the pan to that joint and it laps and covers it but it provides an easy replacement point to remove it and you leave then that copper flashing under the coping stone, that's never touched again, typically. I mean, it's going to last you quite a while, and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I would, I would recommend that you put, take the coping stone off. Uh, it appeared at one point that it looked like it was extremely deteriorated, but I suspect it was strictly the problem with the uh, fiberglass uh, material flashing that was, that was adhered on there. The other thing I caution you is that more than likely the mastics used for that fiberglass probably contains asbestos and you'll need to abate it because it's, it's, it's likely to have asbestos in the fibers and it will be a low percentage but it will be required to be abated. Well, you know, as we look at going <coughs> the two different ways, you know, one issue that's there is that if we retain the walls, clearly they're going to have to be retuck pointed and repaired. Um, Very so that's going to be one element of expense on that side. When we go looking for uh, professional input on this, should we be looking for an historical engineer, an architect? What we, should we be looking for? Uh, there are historic architects in Middle Tennessee that you could call upon. I'd be happy to give you some names. Uh, and they could help design that with you. There are also uh, roofing experts you could call upon. I'd be happy to give you a name of, of, of some and then um, contractors or ha what have you, but there are a number of people that could help you with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we really do feel that we want to have somebody with a good engineering background mm -hmm. up in that attic looking at the yeah. conditions before we make a decision yeah. on where we want to go. It's not surprising at all to me that I saw that your plank decking is split. I mean, just as, as, as long as it's been up there, the heat that it's held, it's the, the wood is, is brittle, and it's probably just frankly time that it needs to be replaced and put up some, you know, some either sheets of plywood or something else up there to help maintain the integrity of that system, mm -hmm. and then deal with your pan and your flashing and your parapet and that kind of thing. <coughs> Any further statements or questions from our group? Okay, I guess my next question would be, um, we can go ahead and, and get in touch with you about uh, uh, resources for uh, the kind of expertise we need, uh, and then can we bring those back to the Commission? Uh, yes, what, what I would suggest and sort of recap, uh, Mr. Mills, is that um, uh, Jim is willing to give you those contacts and then work with those contacts and some of the ideas that he's had since he's got so much experience with the parapets. Um, in, a, in addition to that, you need to get the estimates of <coughs> removal costs versus what it would do to repair and um, the, the parapets themselves and keep them as they are, with the exception of some possible additional 
two more drains. The God gathering uh, those estimates, mm -hmm. and I think what was removal fifty five hundred. Uh, like yeah. yeah, I think removal was was uh, at fifty five hundred dollars. I think it was, but um, we'll finish gathering those. We have in some cases we have kind of apples and oranges in terms of the estimates, so we'll have to kind of sort that out. And then um, one thing that uh, that we had discussed earlier had to do with the fact that we are approaching spring rains, and we would really like to try to get this uh, done and taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, you won't be meeting again for another month. If we have some things together before that time, would it be possible for us to come before you uh, for a, a special call meeting to address the issues? Yes, we can. We can try to make that happen. Okay. All right. Good. We, what we normally try to do in that regard is same time, same day of the week. Okay. Versus because generally, generally, you know, this particular time and Tuesday of the week is the best for our board. So if we do have a meeting prior to the next month's meeting, then we would try to do it on a Tuesday afternoon. Well, and we can keep you appraised of how we're progressing, and perhaps we'll want to be in the agenda for next month. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we won't get there any sooner than that, but we'll be working on it as quickly as we can. Yeah, just let Mr. Lewis know if you officially want to be on the agenda next month, and also if you want uh, a meeting prior to our next month's meeting. All right. Any comments? I thank you all. We do appreciate it. I think you've given us some good information and good places to start, and uh, we will be back in touch with you. Thank you. The, the last thing I'm, I'd like to, to say is that, and I, I can't remember the name of the church on the corner of College and, is it Spring Street? It has the parapets around the... Oh, um, I would suggest that you contact that church and see what their experience has been with their parapets mm -hmm. and if they have special contractors that do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Lewis, um, do we have any uh, new or old business that we need to, to go over? Uh, I don't have any other other business or staff reports uh, other than just uh, we need to talk about replacing uh, uh, one of our members. Yeah, Rob Sanders has uh, turned in his uh, resignation. Uh, he's had to move out of the, uh, the territory here. And um, so we need to replace Rob. And so um, any folks that are in our audience that would be interested in being on this particular board need to contact uh, Brenda Davis or Robert Lewis at 893-6441. Mm -hmm. 893-6441. And they will send you an application. And uh, when you fill that application out, make two copies, send one directly to Mayor Bragg, who makes the final decision, and one to Mr. Lewis, who will present it to our board. And we will, as always, make a recommendation out of a handful of applications that we have to the, to the mayor, but the mayor makes the final decision. Anything else? Have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Second. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.